Let's go for it! <laughs> Yo, Joes. America's daring, highly trained special missions force is like a family. But no matter how much you can count on your brothers and sisters in arms, sometimes you can't stand them. <laughs> and prefer the company of something a little furrier or feathered. Yes, sometimes man's best friend isn't man. It's animal. And some Joes from the original Real American Hero line from 1982 to 1994 came packed with something far more powerful than a rifle or rocket launcher. They came with loyal companionship in the form of an animal companion. Welcome to another Patreon special missions request. These orders come from Top Brass in Australia, General Sean Fuster. And it's for the top five G.I. Joe animal companions. Number five. This one might surprise you. He's not from the Sunbow animated series. He didn't appear in the Deke series either. And another place he doesn't appear is in my collection. But the dolphin Finback makes my list because just look at the size of him. He's bigger than the figure. And while I'm not a big fan of this version of Deep Six, I think it's awesome that old Malcolm Willoughby got a companion to accompany him on long excursions in his shark, since Mr. Warmth could use a good pet. Yeah, yeah. But why a dolphin? You'd think they would have given Deep Six a seal instead, right? Seals may be tough, but they can't handle antimatter. Huh. I never knew that about dolphins. Now I know. And knowing is half the battle. I imagine Finback's personality is similar to Darwin from Sequest. He's clever, witty, loyal, and a bit ferocious if you mess with his pals. Just check out those teeth. Plus, he has a water squirting feature for when Deep Six needed to cool off. You have a peculiar sense of humor, mister. Thanks to 3D Joes for the awesome 360 scans of Deep Six's aquatic pal. Number four. <laughs> this pup is just as beautiful as Deep Six's dolphin. What's that pal wow doing here? It's my dog, Order! The one who does all the hard work in the MP canine unit, Law and Order. He finds the bombs, I drive the car. We tried the other way, but it didn't work. Man, that could have been an 80s Stephen J. Cannell show. Wait, was it an 80s Stephen J. Cannell show? Anyways, I have a big soft spot for doggies. Got two of them myself. And the German Shepherd is one of the most beautiful breeds there is. Right up there with the Siberian Husky. They're smart, they're loyal, they're fierce, but playful too. They're the ultimate watchdog, so it's perfect that America's ultimate watchdog force has one to call their own. His lone animated appearance is in the G.I. Joe movie, where he's tasked with finding a hidden bomb set by Beachhead as part of a training exercise. He's gray in the movie, but the actual toy was brown with black. And Beachhead is clearly not a dog person. Especially when Order plays fetch with a live bomb counting down. Let go, you dumb dog! Which Beachhead set himself, so... Really, who's to blame, Wayne? I hope you both get fleas. Number three. Number three is the most famous dog of war in G.I. Joe. It's Mutt's best friend, the Junkyard Dog. You got the dog! You got a dog! No, not that Junkyard Dog. This Junkyard Dog. <laughs> junkyard has the distinction of being one of the first two G.I. Joe animal companions ever, which was a big game changer in 1984. Sure, there had been figures released with some really awesome gear and weaponry, but they come with animals now? That's almost like a whole extra person. Junkyard's everything order is, just with a cooler name, less grace, and more viciousness. If he's dealing with Cobra, that is. <laughs> My guess. Or Rogue Vegetation. <laughs> he's even more vicious than Mutt, and that's saying something. Hey, he's gonna bite me! Okay, Mutt. Let Junkyard take over. 
When it comes to his master, though, he's a big softy. Merry Christmas, you old hound dog. Number two. Freedom. Spirit's Eagle, the other animal companion from 1984, and the true rival of Storm Shadow in the animated series. You may remember it being Storm Shadow and Spirit going tooth and nail over multiple episodes, but it's Freedom who always had the White Ninja's number, whether it was catching throwing stars. Cobra! What the what? Did that eagle just actually do that? To catching an arrow? Wow. Or to just being a pest. Old Tommy Arashikage just never could figure out how to dispatch of the winged one. Or maybe he just didn't have the heart to ruffle the feathers of such a majestic creature. Fly, mighty one. Seek those who can aid us. Like Junkyard with Mutt, Freedom was truly an extension of his pal spirit. Peaceful, noble, focused, and deadly. Number one. Although Timber wasn't released in plastic form until 1985 when he was packaged with the second version of Snake Eyes, this Grey Wolf has been with the brand ever since September 14th, 1983, when he first appeared in the second episode of the Mass Device five-parter, The Worms of Death. He's rescued from a bear trap by Snake Eyes, who's suffering from radiation poisoning, and repays the favor by attacking a polar bear? Man, G.I. Joe animals were tough hombres. Yeah, a polar bear tries to go all revenant on snakes, but Timber proves he's king of the tundra. For a few seconds, anyways. Timber's the most ferocious of the animal companions on my list, baring his teeth and ready to take a bite out of anyone who messes with snake eyes. He's also the most fragile of the animal companions, made of a much more brittle plastic with no give whatsoever, and his back foot is often broken. He's the perfect companion for snake eyes, yin and yang, and they made a striking pair in their card art and packaging. He's also a master of disguise, and a pretty good dancer too. Just as beautiful as a German Shepherd, but with a streak, a wide streak, of wildness, which says a lot about his undying loyalty to Snake Eyes. That's my list. Good, the comedian did his job. And Sean shared his as well, which includes a parrot and a dog. Uh, what parrot? What dog? Well, since you asked so nicely, the top five G.I. Joe animals. Timber takes the cake. He's my kind of wolf. Followed by Croc Master's Crocodile, a childhood favorite. Then Polly, Junkyard, and probably Dusty's little buddy. Read you loud and clear, Sandstorm. Let's be honest. It's all about Timber and Polly. What? 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 Can it, bird brain? But sometimes you just can't go past a big old croc. Spoken like a true Aussie. Just look at that croc. Beautiful. Beautiful. Crikey! And a couple honorable mentions to the critters that weren't mentioned yet on the list. The Bobcat Max from Spearhead and Max, which sounds like another 80s Stephen J. Cannell show. Desert Scorpion's huge mutated scorpion. You haven't met my pet scorpion. <laughs> Dreadnought Naga Hides Wild Boar. Hydro Viper's Manta Ray. Raptor's Falcon. Serpentor's Snake. Voltar's Vulture. And Undertow's. And a few you may not have heard about, the Brazilian exclusives, Urzor's Bear, Kangor's Kangaroo, Leontor's Lion, and Tigor's Tiger. There was a T-Rex released with a Dino Hunter's playset, but I wouldn't really consider him a companion. The Joes are more his companions, or hors d'oeuvres. That's a funny pose. Kind of reminds me of Celine Dion. 
So what's your favorite G.I. Joe animal companion? Share in the comments below, or on Facebook, Instagram, or Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, thank you Patreon Tribe for your support. Welcome to our new members, Gary Wolf, Stuart Norris, John Adams, Jeremy Brown, and Tunu. And thank you Scuba Pete for the extra cheese. Ah, Polly want a taxi! Get Polly out of here! Ah. Hope you enjoyed. Feel free to share and to join the tribe. Fetch, subscribe. Yo, Joe!